videos. When I first started teaching several years ago, I became acquainted with the learning pyramid, different levels of retention for different methods of presentation. And lecturing, I found by itself, if I am or become twice as effective as the average lecturer, well then maybe my students will have 10% retention, which does not compare favorably to those other methods. So lecture by itself, not very powerful. I looked at my students. We didn't have very much in common. And one thing that I had in common or could get in common with a lot of my students is an interest in sports. So that's something we could talk about with the Hispanic students, the boys especially. Soccer, Chivas versus America. Uh, rap music was a big thing and here's an image of the rapper 50 Cent and I found that my students were really open they were trying to learn about me and connect with me as much as I was with them and so I tried to think of opportunities to do that but one thing my students would do is they'd come to the classroom rapping a couple times I found myself the subject of the verse and here Tommy came up with this one Mr. G here he's gonna teach the class and I couldn't resist finishing and so I said, and if you don't behave, he gonna kick you. Well, I leave it to the viewer's imagination to finish that final punchline word, but the students thought that was hilarious. And so it really got me to thinking. I wanted to try rap and music to bring across points in algebra that students had trouble remembering. So the first one I came up with had to do with slope. And so my, my rap went something like this. You can find the rate of change. You can find the slope. This is how you do it. Have a little hope. Take at least two sets of coordinates and X and Y for each. Now make a T-chart table. Now what's within your reach? X values on the left, Y values on the right. At least two points are needed to prove that you are bright. Now you draw the arrows on both of the sides and calculate the differences. You can do it if you try, either bottom from top or top from bottom, the same way on each side and your answer won't be rotten. Pretend that you're a baseball player, right hand over left, and calculate that slope. You've proved you're not a dope. If all the slopes are equal, then you proved you have a line. If not, then maybe it's quadratic or something just as fine. Anyway, the students really thought that was hilarious. They were putting this on ringtones, asking me to do it over again. And so I thought that maybe I was onto something. And one morning, Alex came into my classroom before school, and he asked me, why don't you do another rap, Mr. G? So I came up with this one about Pythagoras. There was a Duke Pythagoras in 500 BC, master of philosophy, music, geometry. Found you could take the squares of both sides of a right angle. They'll be the square of the diagonal across any rectangle. And so I, from there, I just decided to do other raps. I did, a, I did maybe one more that end of the school year. Now first I just wrote down on pen and paper, but that coming uh, summer, I really made a decision. Some students told me it really helped them learn and I saw that the students and I were having some fun with it so I thought it was worth pursuing and a teacher friend pointed out how the Hebrew scholars memorize long passages of scripture they do it by putting words to music and I use and see others use the alphabet song to remember the order of the letters and so there's a really there's a precedent for learning through music and beat I weighed in the fun, the opportunity for variety in the classroom, the chance for effectiveness in helping teachers to remember how to do things, and I decided to make an investment. So that coming summer, I knew that in order to record music, to be used in the classroom would take me beyond my capabilities. And I knew some capital would be important for uh, equipment. I knew the real investment would come in the time to learn to do it. And so that summer for hardware, I got a new Audix, OM2 microphone, a 20-foot cord, a one-quarter inch adapter, some nice Sony headphones, and a mic stand. All that cost me about $180. For a computer, I did some research and learned that laptop computers are very good because they are pretty quiet. And I used my school district issued HP Compact NX5000 model. For the classroom, I need some speakers. A quarter size laptop speakers won't do the job. And this is one of my systems If $10 can get you a set that will do the job pretty well. For software, recording software, I got N-Track Studio 4.0 for $45. Currently available is version, says 6.0, I think it's now 6.1 or 6.2, $64. I've used Windows Media Player. I also subscribe to a music downloading service, and now it's uh, www.mp3rocket.com. I paid $35. Since then, I've downloaded thousands of songs. Occasionally, I've 
gone to uh, walmart.com and downloaded uh, karaoke versions of songs, music, behind which I can put vocal tracks. That has helped me a lot sometimes. And initially I just used PowerPoint 2000 and I just wrote text down and flashed them up on the, on the screen, something like this. Well, over that following semester, teachers point out to me, well, this is pretty cool, but what you really need are graphics. So that following winter break, I invested the two weeks getting tutorials on how to put graphics into PowerPoint. And from there, it's just one thing after another. I learned how to use TI Connect for calculator screenshots. And making calculator screenshots can be very effective at helping bring technology to the student's fingertips. Learning how to add clip art to the slides. Learning how to take photographs and upload these photographs to the computer and then import those photos into the presentation. I learned how to sync the music with the PowerPoint slides and put them together and make what we call an AVI file. And then I learned how to take those AVI files and convert those files into my first DVD and I used it, used NeuroVision Express 3.0 and I still like using that piece of software. And this is what a Nero 3.0 use putting together a DVD looks like. And this is what a menu would look like that you might be able to create on Nero or another form be Roxio 2009. There are a lot of other lot of, lots of types of software that can do this. Then I finally converted my files into my first DVD. And this one I have currently available for sale. This is one I use in my classroom for my music right now. And this would be a screenshot of that first menu from that video. And what do I do now? With what I've learned and continue to learn along the way, I discovered new ways I could do a better job of teaching, either, even beyond the, the rap and music. Now remember the view of the learning pyramid earlier? Well, I found that by using graphics, we could do many things. We could bring the retention level up to a 20-30% range. That's a big increase. If I walk around the classroom and stop for discussion, well, we can get up to more like 50% and occasionally, if we're involved students helping them teach others, can be as high as 90%. Now, I know a man, Bob Dolman, and here, here's a quote from him. He gives presentations on how to help parents teach their children, children with learning defects. Anyway, here he I quote him, I noticed that during breaks when we ran videos of me speaking, they paid more attention to me on a television than they did to me live and in person. And so I've realized that myself in the classroom is I have content of myself delivering content. Sometimes it's better than having myself do it live. Here's a slide that I use. I make videos, put them on YouTube, TeacherTube. Here's one digital word wall. Here's another one I use, finding products using the box method, points, lines, and planes. What I've done with these presentations is I first brought more effective content to the classroom. Remember the higher levels of learning. And secondly, I've had more fun and interest in the classroom myself. And that's really helpful as you, as a teacher, it's not an easy job. Well, having some fun at it is one thing that helps recharge the batteries to help I believe, make me more effective as I move to the future and plan to come back next year. And I've successfully cloned myself, and so I can be at different places at the same time. I can be around the world. I've taught people as far away as Australia. I can practice differentiated instruction as I give a student material on his or her flash drive or have a student review one of my lessons on the computer. What do I do from, where do I go from here? Well. I can be more successful at having more students involved in the process of creating media. I can invest more myself in technology and I plan to do that right after this conference. Yes, it'll cost some money, but it's going to be well worth it. I continue to develop my website as a place where teachers and students can go to find information on learning. I plan to continue my training at uh, teacher training conferences whenever I get the opportunity. I plan to continue making video. I've had some traction there. It's something that I like to do and I think 
It helps me be effective. I plan to teach Algebra 2 next year and have some fun at it. Anyway, here's some, uh, this was a video on why I make math videos. I hope this has been helpful and instructive to you. Thanks.